Born of Blood and Fire is the new book by Richard Ward, published by Scarlet Imprint. Now, this is their very latest publication. It came out at the end of 2021, and it's a beautiful edition, as are all of their books, to be honest with you, uh, whether you're picking up a paperback edition of this or the standard excuse me, the standard hardcover edition that I'm showing you right here, or any of their, uh, their, their super deluxe <laughs> editions, you know that what you're getting is going to be something physically beautiful. Um, uh, you know, this, this particular one has got this lovely uh, crimson uh, cover here. It's coming up a lot more orange on the screen than it actually is. It's a lot um, more, it's a lot brighter red uh, than, than than what you're probably seeing here. I think it might be because of the blue background. It kind of skews the colour of the colour of the cover there a little. Um, uh, but it's a really nice buckram. It's very soft and so on. Uh, but uh, you're not necessarily here for the form of the book, which is, I, I'm just going to summarise by saying that it's as perfect as anything else that Scarlet Imprint put out. What you're here for is most likely the contents. So let me just uh, flip over to the contents page. Beautiful artwork there. Uh, I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure who the who the artist is. Um, uh, I'm sure that you'll uh, find that out. Um, but yeah, looking at the contents, the book itself is about the Petwo rite of voodoo. And it, the role that it played politically over its existence in, in Haiti, uh, I'll probably uh, summarize it that way. Uh, the Petro rite is one of the two most famous rites of voodoo. There's, uh, there, there are 21 uh, different rites in voodoo. And yeah, the Petro rite is generally stereotyped as being quite aggressive and and dark and this uh, book kind of goes into the detail of what it exactly is and uh, I, I love the fact that this the beginning of the book is addressing those stereotypes and misconceptions and uh, and and really dealing with with the reality of uh, well what what the petro right actually is but also why it came to be seen as being an aggressive a strain of voodoo and so on and so forth. It, uh, I'd say that it's it's quite a, a nice introduction to what voodoo is. I think that if you've never uh, uh, read a book on voodoo and this was the first book that you picked up, uh, I think that you could do a, a lot worse. This, this isn't the very first book on voodoo that I've uh, read. This is this is uh, uh, the, the, the one, uh, Secrets of Voodoo by Milo Rigaud, which is uh, uh, referenced actually um, by, by Richard Ward here. Um, but this was written in 1969 uh, uh, and, uh, and, and, and a great place to start also if, uh, if, if you uh, prefer to start there. But uh, as I say, if this is the very first book that you pick up on Voodoo, um, uh, you could do much worse. The information is clear, it's, uh, it's accurate, uh, as far as I can tell. It's certainly very well researched and very well documented. You can see that every single uh, page uh, is um, uh, yeah, dotted with uh, 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 footnotes and references. It's, uh, yeah, it's, a, it's a scholarly work. It's very definitely a scholarly work. In fact, I would say that it, its concern is more about informing than it is about educating. Um, that may be more true of some chapters than others, where some chapters are really very easy to get into. Others can be just um, uh, a, a little denser for uh, for the reader who's not 100% uh, up to date with the current thinking on voodoo. Um, but, uh, but no, I think that the majority of the, of the chapters here are, are very approachable, very easy to read. Here's a, a little example of the style of writing here. So as you can see, very, very readable. Um, uh, the, the, the author's got a, a firm grasp of what makes for 
uh, uh, easy easy reading and uh, and every concept I was worried a little uh, I'll, I'll finish that thought in a second I was worried a little as I read the foreword that uh, used certain jargon terms I was thinking to myself oh this is going to expect me to know all all these jargon terms but actually no uh, as you start reading the book itself uh, starting with chapter one of course um, uh, every uh, concept or term that it would not be naturally known by uh, uh, by the the average non-specialist reader is first of all explained before being used and uh, I strongly strongly appreciate that uh, so that's the first the first part is addressing the stereotypes then uh, it goes a little bit more into the uh, politics right and uh, and and yeah the the history the political history of uh, the petrol right of, of voodoo in haiti uh, the reasons why it became mm, yeah a, a politically charged right uh, and uh, and and that was a really very interesting um part for me to read uh, then part three is about the right itself it's about uh, what the initiation looks like um, uh, and then you've got these um, uh, these these wonderful veve um, uh, which are the sigils of the various law uh, the law being the um, uh, the spirits of, of voodoo the the spirits and gods of, uh, of voodoo um, but what I also really appreciated here is uh, that uh, it's very clear that um, this isn't something it, it, this isn't a do-it-yourself guide right this isn't a go and call these spirits uh, you can do it yourself kind of thing no this is a description of what this uh, connected tradition uh, looks like uh, uh, and and the reason why it does things in particular ways uh, uh, yeah there's no suggestion here that uh, yeah get together with uh, with a few friends and <laughs> and call a few uh, uh, voodoo gods uh, I, I, that that would not be a good idea uh, nevertheless these uh, these veve uh, here are um, are transcribed actually from Milo Rigo's book um, in in this very beautiful fashion you've got uh, you've got a, a good few pages in the middle there you can see the uh, uh, the, the, the darker pages there are all these uh, all, all the veve uh, which are really so so beautiful they're normally inscribed in the sand or, or with grain on the floor um, um, for for invoking these these various spirits and gods very very cool uh, and then it goes into the philosophy of the um the the, the, the practice so the the, uh, the the left and right hands right and the uh, uh, the the idea of the book or the, the sorcerer um, uh, which is uh, uh, well seen with uh, varying degrees of trust <laughs> by various uh, levels of society and uh, and and um, uh, by by different people and uh, and and yeah and and why it all it, it is the way it is and um, uh, and, and so on uh, and then finally the evolution of the petro tree um, uh, the, the 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 way petro uh, currently looks and then you've got these uh, these appendices the appendices which I will show you right now da, 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 da. so uh, <laughs> here we are uh, yeah as with all uh, scarlet imprint books uh, the, the the binding is is very tight the idea is that these are books that will last a lifetime and so um, uh, you know, I, I, t I tend to to read them, you know, half open like this. <laughs> uh, but uh, but for the purpose of this review, I'm I'm pushing it a little bit further than I would normally do. Um, uh, and uh, and yeah, and you get these um, uh, yeah the ancestral spirit roots of the main Haitian Petro Lua. Uh, yeah, so this is another thing. Um, I, I'm not used to seeing the word Lua spelt with a an, a W. I'm I, I'm used to seeing it spelled L O A, right? Uh, I, I was a, a little bit surprised by that at the beginning, but it uh, doesn't take long to get used to it. In fact, most of the spellings are um, uh, modern, um, accepted spellings. So that that's that's basically what it is. With uh, as much of the um, how to say uh, the uh, 
um, uh, colonialism <laughs> scrubbed as much as possible, I suppose. Uh, so, uh, yep. So, so yeah, the, uh, yeah, any, yeah, anyway, some, some, some very interesting stuff there. The lines of magical transmission in Haitian Petro, uh, the lines of initiated transmission, uh, and, and then, uh, yeah, origins of, uh, th th this was really cool to read the, uh, the, the, yeah, the origins of the Petro Lois. Uh, it goes into the various spirits and, uh, talking about where they originally came from and so on, right? Uh, so, so very cool. And then there are some, um, uh, songs. Oh, actually, yeah, uh, the, that these are, are mostly described in um, uh, in in the book itself. Uh, I'm not going to be able to find it, but yeah, it goes through every single uh, spirit and explains to you uh, what they are, what they do, and and their likely uh, origin. Because of course, uh, voodoo uh, stems from. The various places in Africa where um, uh, where, where, where people were taken and uh, uh, and they had to um, uh, mix their beliefs and uh, and practices together in order to to stay together to to, to stay united. Um, uh, so so that that's all very well explained in here as well. And then these beautiful songs to the various law are really really beautiful in the. Uh, within in the Creole and then uh, the translation over here. Great, great stuff. Really, really beautiful. Um, and then uh, the orig on the origins of the Haitian Boko, the Boko being the sorcerer. Um, uh, and, uh, and, yeah, and that was also very interesting to read. And then, of course, the bibliography. Lots of further reading if you're interested in finding out more on this uh, fascinating tradition. Um, um, there we are. That is Born of Blood and Fire. Uh, as I say, uh, there are still copies of the um, of the, uh, the, the standard hardcover book available um, uh, at the time of recording anyway. I'll leave links down below and yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe down below and I'll see you very soon with another video. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.